Tell her, no longer comedy magicians, but rather real magicians. minute guys <laughs> right side up now <laughs> with me are Penn and Teller here in the studio that was a great great well, thank you trip. you also get to see me uh, fall against the back of the thing when you're when you're 230 pounds and they hang you upside down like like beef and then make you scream <laughs> for a while all the blood vessels in my face popped it looked like a Japanese monster movie and then I fell over at the end of the bit it was a really it was the bit that really hurt us the most I think of all the bits. I was present. shocked to see that you were upside down I couldn't figure it out yeah, you, to me you didn't look like blood vessels were bald well, no, we had a lot of, we had almost clown white makeup on. We almost looked like Cirque du Soleil over there, of course, without <laughs> the stupid expressions. <laughs> but uh, we, uh, we had that kind of white, uh, white thing, and, and it was, uh, we were very bright. When I took off the uh, makeup, it was really scary. I had that kind of like, that, you know, the last pictures of W.C. Field's nose <laughs> going on there with all the broken blood vessels. It was, but we were willing to suffer for our art, suffer, as suffer. we hope you will today. Ooh, you've got something here. It looks like it's a suffer chamber. Well, yeah. Now, Teller's not going to talk Suffer chamber. <laughs> and, we, and we have the rubber sheets. We're all set know, to go. You see this? They put plastic all <laughs> yeah, over the sofas. That means they're going to be dangerous they, they today. They always do that. All right, go ahead. Oh, okay. Well, I just wanted to, this is a little thing we invented because um, so many showbiz people, when they reach your level of success, end up looking for more and more kicks, and then we find them dead in a hot tub. <laughs> so we've tried to come up with something that can give you the same kind of rush dead in a hot you want tub to get feeling, out, of your, huh? out of your personal life, and all you'll do on this one is break a finger. And what we've done, if you want to try this at home, and you're welcome to, if you do try it at home, be careful, though. Don't use mouse traps because they hardly even hurt. Make sure you use a full-size rat trap. And then you tie a little piece of rope to the, uh, the little whacker here right around through the bottom. And then uh, that way, when you hit the button, it won't hit your finger. All right, that's it. But safe. then on one of the traps out of the, uh, what do we have here, seven, you cut the rope where you can't see it. And then if you pick that one, boom, and you have, uh, you have one broken digit. What do you call so we've this got, uh, It's called rodent roulette. And uh, the way it's played is this. You spin it like so. And then one of these traps is live, and six of them are completely safe. And then you play the game like this. Now watch the rush. You're going to feel like Elvis in the later years, I guarantee you. <laughs> Which is why we have the plastic down. Oh, yeah. Safe. Safe. Now, if you, what you want to do, Faith, is because you know that that one's completely safe, if you just keep your eye on that one, you'll have no trouble whatsoever <laughs> making sure to when, your turn, when your they turn, look identical when to your me. turn comes. They, they do look My identical. My turn. Yeah, your turn's going to come after. Yeah, right. Oh, okay. I'm okay, too. <laughs> Now, if you keep your eye, you know that two of them in here we already know are safe. If you keep your eye on that, you'll be, abso <laughs> you'll be absolutely fine. Now, okay, do you want to you wanna take a turn here? I think I'll pass. I'm going to pass? Don't yeah. you think? Okay. Yeah, you wanna, Don't you, you think? Wanna, I mean, you, you guys he'll, are he'll nuts. Take, he'll I'm take, not. He'll, he'll, he'll take your turn for you here. You want to spin it? Okay. Okay. God. He's just uh, he's just screaming. That was just fake. It's a little little bulb in his hand there, just to make the game a little more exciting. Do you want to reset that Great one? Tell them we'll go on playing. It's right a very now, nice shot. How can you I see? actually adjusted a little bit. His shot was not perfect. We worked as a team as we always do. Now I see why the sofa's recovered. But you know, Brian yeah. Gumble's gonna be very angry in the morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll just make a good story to go with it. Let me try. Uh... Oh, I'm o I'm okay again too. I'm gonna do the rest of the show with the blood. You like this? We like this. We love it. We love it. Okay. Is it my turn? Is that what this means? Yep, yeah, that's what it means. If you're going to, if we're going to go around uh -huh, here. Uh -huh, uh -huh. How about a bloody pencil? Uh, you're, going to, you're going to cheat. Can I cheat? You're going to cheat. Okay. You're going to cheat. This one? Yeah, Anyone? Go ahead, go ahead, yeah. Oh! Well, you you you, I you, you back. broke the you broke the whole you broke the whole tip, but you did. Uh, <laughs> that's because something smacked my finger. I think you would you would you would have won. You would have uh, you would have broke your finger had you done that right. And these Aren't are, I lucky? You, you, you would have been the lucky one. Well, actually, it broke the lead off that pencil. Look at that. It did. Took the lead right out of your pencil. It, it smacked my finger pretty good, too. We'll be back. Am I, <laughs> am I on my spot, Morty? No, I just You've got to clean yourself up. Let's take a break. Okay. We'll come back. We'll talk with Penn and Teller, and we will bring in one of the stars of traditional magic. One of the giants. Giants, giants. Harry! <laughs> We're back on a closer look with one of the best in the magic business, Harry Blackstone, Jr. He's the son of one of America's greatest magicians and only one of 11 magicians to ever receive the coveted Star of Magic Award. Right. Welcome. 
Thank you. Of course, you. Ken and Thank Teller you. are still here with us. So what, you're, you're a pro, you're really dolled up there, too. Yes. What do you think of their, their rodent trick, their rodent uh, roulette? <laughs> well, I, I didn't get a chance to see it because they wouldn't allow me in the studio here because they said they didn't know what kind of chaos was. I saw it on a, on a monitor outside, but uh, it only went two or three this time. How come it didn't go all of them, like the other times? You mean like the way it was rigged to go? Uh, yeah. uh, oh, <laughs> we thought, quiet, stupid. We thought the, uh, the trick would be better if we kept a little bit secret. Well, the thing, no, I didn't mean rigged, but what I meant was that... Uh, Look, here, I'll show you what I mean. Um, I, uh, I sometimes do this for my, for my friends. You see, the kind of magic that you all do is what I call weirdo magic, <laughs> uh, or bizarre magic. I think that's the term. That, uh, and so I thought that since you were doing a rodent uh, kind of thing, that I might make a, a little rodent. You see, this is my more traditional kind of, of magic like this. You see, it's a, it's a, it's a little rodent type like this. See, just, just like that, and thought you might like to, to see it that way. So anyway, um, if, we, if we could, though, I thought that it might be most fun to, to do it like this. Would you have your trap out there for a second? Oh, no, here, we might, <laughs> might do the, the, the trap. Come here, sweetheart, right here. You might like to have that. Now, now put it out there and do it. Oh, I, I don't That's think it. we should play with this, because it would be death for him. It wouldn't be just a little... No, 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 it wouldn't be death at all for him, because he knows the secret. <laughs> That's fine. Do you know the secret? Do you know how they did it? I have the slightest idea, and that's only half the story. <laughs> Does that's it bother fine. you that they can do a trick that you can't unravel? Hey, hey, there he is. Hey, hey, he wants the blood that's in there. Come on, come on over here to the blood. That's it. I did. That's it. <laughs> See, I don't he said know. it was going to be like a hot tub. For him, it is. Yeah. Uh, the tricks that they do are, in my estimation, an attempt to, um, in a sense, elicit a whole different kind of response from the audience. Um, you guys have done, I think, a, a great service to magic. You've made it much easier for those of us who do traditional magic to keep our little group here, and you've gone out for the new group. You've gone out for the people that uh, are looking for something other than laughter and applause. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it is. You're, you're, you're know, into mystery. A lot of magicians don't agree with you. Some magicians actually think that the, you know, what they do is take the magic out of the, magi out of the magic by revealing the secret. No, actually, they don't reveal the secret. I mean, sometimes they give the impression of revealing the secret, but the real secret is the fact that they only give the impression of it, and they don't really give away the secret. The real secret, of course, is the fact that you can take the rat like that and do that, and it just disappears. <laughs> I don't know where he's going to reappear, is yeah, my problem. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's just gone to Brian Gumbel's dressing room. Oh, oh. well, that'll be two reasons that Brian will be angry by tomorrow. Right. Do you have any other tricks up your sleeve for us today? Oh, I got lots of other tricks up. All right, sleeve. go for it. Oh, your not, turn. not now. No, oh, I later? Don't, I don't want to do that. No, they told me that I could I could talk with you for a little while and then do more tricks later because I don't I don't do that kind of of magic where I, I'm a stand up magician. A stand up. Yes. Okay. Well, we'll take a break. When we come back, we'll stand you up. I'll stand up and do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're back now on a closer look. We're going to show you something that most magicians don't want you to see, how a trick is done. Penn and Teller do this on stage in their current Broadway show. We've got some tape of it, and Penn, while we roll that tape, tell us what we're going to be seeing. Okay. Uh, this is a thing called uh, Lift Off to Love, and here we're doing it the way a uh, standard magician would do it, standard amateur magician. You see the Mylar curtain. What you can't hear right now is that there's also bad white boy Motown music underneath it. And we're taking Teller apart. See his little hand over here. And already it's strange because we're doing it with, uh, with one of us instead of pushing a woman into the box and torturing her. See his head is down there and all this. And the audience is watching this like they would a normal, uh, a normal magic act. And magicians at this point get very, very happy. And then the second time through, we do it with clear plexiglass boxes. So you can see Teller uh, sliding under the trap doors and going back over. And I want to also point out that the music gets better at this point. So you see how that same part's being done? Then you'll see Teller slide along the bottom. Don't be distracted away from my dancing. There you go. And we do the whole, uh, the whole routine like that. Unfortunately, since uh, Harry has already tipped tipped our hand, uh, I think Harry can back me on this. No magician in the world would ever do taking a person into three pieces like that. You wouldn't use trap doors and stuff because it's just I'd, too I'd hard. I've never thought of it. <laughs> I've never thought of it, but we will now. There's a lot of better ways to oh, do that. Yeah. The audience may love that, but don't magicians get angry with you? And by Amateurs the way, you've got do. a bucket there. You want to stick your head oh, in yeah, while well, we talk? Tell, tell her, just make this move along. Tell her can hold his breath about a minute, minute and a half. So we'll get Teller underwater wait, wait, here. Wait, and then wait, wait a minute, hold it. 
<laughs> you had the plastic over you. Okay. <laughs> Wise move. That suit costs a lot more than ours, doesn't it? <laughs> well, mine's also my off-Broadway suit. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now he's here. And Robbie, just start a just start a timer on this and give me like 30 seconds or a minute and all that kind of stuff. He's going to go about a minute. Thing. We don't want him to die. What yeah. I was saying is that uh, we do we we have to do it. It's amateur magicians get very very uptight because amateur magicians when they're first learning think that the audience really believes that there is something magical going on whereas the professional magicians know that we're all dealing with scams in one way or another whether you call it illusion like a lot of others or whether you call it ripoffs like we do it's still it, it doesn't with annoy it. you that they just revealed that trick no they actually didn't reveal the trick this is something they've created in order to reveal it because it really isn't anything that's in the modern repertory Thirty seconds. Well, thank so the, the point is that what they do is not anything like what any normal uh, What about when they saw magician. the box in half? Well, I don't know. Why don't you try split. that? <laughs> Can we try that? Well, so we, did, we, did do, we did do that on Letterman, but we did it very, very different because we, uh, we screwed it up once and then went all the way through with a, uh, with a circular saw. Oh, also. But uh, the, way, the way we revealed that was a way that wouldn't... Thank you, Robbie. You're, you're okay for a little longer, aren't you? Yeah, tell us. Uh, the way we revealed that was also a way that wouldn't work anywhere but on the David Letterman show. It wasn't a way that uh, you could do it on a, on a regular stage. We did don't you also raise the ante for yourselves? I mean, the more you reveal tricks, don't you have to come up uh, with new Oh, yeah, coming up with tricks you're going to and... reveal is really difficult because you can't go into the standard repertoire because it's just not interesting. It's like looking at a score of a Beethoven symphony. A very, sm very small segment of the audience for Beethoven wants to look at that score. And thank you. He's, he's doing fine. I think he's okay. You okay? So, uh... Uh, He's, oh, wait a minute. If you really were to uh, reveal the secrets, it would be just too dull for the standard audience. Not only that, but I think the music analogy is absolutely perfect for what you guys do, because there is a great deal of the contrast of what magicians do and what musicians do. You, I know, are a very fine musician. He's an excellent uh, guitarist, besides being um, a magician of sorts. <laughs> uh, you know, you, you, uh, when you used to play guitar all the time, it was really, really terrific. And today, they are kind of like He's a different aspect of, of magic. He's fine, you, you guys don't seem fine. to be at all bothered by the fact that this man has Well, that's all right, because I'll tell you why. I hope it doesn't work. Because Harry is talking! I'm oh, sorry, Harry. That's fine. He's making a uh, what is, The a point is okay. that what Tell I wanted to do was to make sure that, glory while that Harry's talking. it's kind of like watching musicians no, themselves. No reason to be rude. Okay. Uh, okay. It's don't, that the he's pen fine. He's fine. Uh, he's is good. kind of like the Sid Vicious You've got of uh, magic, and he's kind of like he's the Marcel Marceau. He's saying nice Marceau. stuff about me. He's saying very nice stuff about me, Taylor. Okay. 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 That's fine. That's good. He won't bother you now. Here's reason number three why Brian's not going to let us use his cell phone again. He's okay to the end of the segment now, Harry. You can make your point. You were saying wonderful stuff about that. We got 10 seconds. What do you as, think? As an individual does this kind of thing, that the ending is uh, kind of like the crescendo in, in music. As sometimes it ends with a bang, sometimes a with a whimper. Come on. And sometimes and you have a little coda afterwards, too. <laughs> 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 you, you okay there, Tell How long do you do, Robbie? 2.54. Okay, well, it's, it's all about a record, record, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. Hey, wait a minute. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. Wait a minute. I bet Houdini couldn't have done that. Did you, did you get wet over there? <laughs> Just slightly, slightly. Okay, we're going to all dry off. It. We'll take a break and come back. I'm glad I remembered about this one. <laughs> yes, you're all safe, aren't you? Yeah. Right? <laughs> We're back again with Penn and Teller and with Harry Blackstone, Jr. All right, you're into revealing tricks. Tell us how you... I know you never talk. Tell us how he did that. Oh, the, uh, the, uh, the water thing? Yeah. It was magic. To reveal it. He uh, some, through his ears. Through his ears. Yes. yes. As, yes. As, 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 Learned as, that as, from he, Billy McComb, as I understand. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> there, the, the mouth and nose are not the only orifices you can breathe through. You're just <laughs> sucking it in through his ears. I won't follow up no on that question. But Good if we thinking. switched buckets, could you still do it? Oh, sure. <laughs> sure. Oh, of course. Well, as my mother used to say, one lies, the other swears to it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, for the first time ever, are the three of you going to do one we've trick never, together? We've never performed together, but now there's, now there's a bigger thing than our petty little acts. Now there's a bigger thing. A higher now, calling? We're, we're trying to do something. There's always been a national anthem. As you know, Sinead O'Connor got into a lot of trouble with that in Roseanne Barr. But there's never been uh, a national magic trick. And we have been trying to push that at the beginning of sporting events, 20,000 people would stand up together and perform the National Magic Trick simultaneously. So uh, you, I want you to picture that we're, uh, we're at a large sporting event, like Madison Square Garden. All right. And, uh, and a, a man comes out to the center, comes over to the mic, and then in unison, everybody, he says, would you all rise and perform the National Magic Trick? And the entire audience stands up and does this. Look, our hands are empty. 
look, a little red hanky. Watch closely. Not closely enough, it's gone. But a little whiffle dust. Play it big, Harry. Wait, little wait, whiffle wait, wait, dust. What is whiffle dust? Well, just, just reach up in the air. Oh. Little whiffle dust. Whiffle dust. And it's back. Hey, play ball. And the great thing about that trick is if you just follow the rules, it works. It's one of those, one of those magic... And then the crowds go wild. The crowd goes wild. wild. And, and, then, and then, of course, to please Frank Sinatra, they would then sing the national anthem right after that on pitch and with, with proper reverence. But I think that the national magic comes first and then use for your big punch the national uh, anthem. Thank you, thank you for knowing You're welcome that. to keep that. No, I, I, it's, it's a little piece of magic you put right I, I in your show. I don't use little ones like this. I use big 36-inch and 72-inch uh, silks show like this. Off. I, I show you, You'll use a little one like this? And you can make a I think, I think the show needs more subtlety. More subtle. Put the little, put the little thing in your show. You're, right. You're absolutely There's right. There's nothing subtle thank about here. You this man. This Look at this. Why, thank you. I'm going to disappear. Now, they say with every spangle that your credibility as a magician goes down. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got no spangles on. All right, it's still here. Close look goes back. But bobbles. Bobbles. You have bobbles. I was amazed today, but you all know the tricks of the trade. Can you still marvel at their tricks and vice versa? I marvel at the best, best trick they have, which is how they get rebooked. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all so much for being such good sports today. Appreciate well, thank it. you. Good to see you. Thank you. It's good thank to see you, you Harry. Good to see you. And uh, I'd love for you to come be part of our show sometime. Well, you might need to make me disappear tomorrow when Brian sees the couch. <laughs> Bye, everybody. That's it for us. Harry's fault. <laughs> Harry, without you, I